Hey guys, welcome to RC Video Reviews. You know, I'm, I'm doing this video today because I get, um, I, I got a comment and the comment was that I've seen a couple of videos on this Express LRS business and I still don't know what it does. And it occurs to me from time to time that when we do YouTubers and people that are in the hobby, when we do all of our videos, we make certain assumptions about what people know and what they don't know. And we bypass the things that are necessary for people who are new to the technology to understand it. So for that reason, I wanted to do a session for new people today. And that's the objective is just do a little session where we, it's, it, this is for novices. If you know Express LRS, you probably won't learn a new thing here at all. But if you're new to Express LRS and you're not familiar with how it works, you know, stick around. I've got a intro planned. We're going to do some a little bit of background investigation on what Express LRS is, just so you understand why, why it's out there. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the hardware, some of the hardware capabilities that are there. And I'm going to walk you through a basic setup on a radio, just a real simple setup on how to get an Express LRS module and a receiver up and running. So I'm going to show you how to do all of that. And uh, hopefully that'll help clear up some of the mystery behind what Express LRS is. And in between each section, we're going to take a break and I'll check comments. I'll look at the comments and see what's going on and I'll try and answer questions you have. So that's why I'm doing it in the live stream format. I wanted you guys to have the opportunity to ask questions. So if you have anything on your mind as we go through it, feel free to stick your hand in the air and say, hey, can you explain this part? I don't understand that. That was the reason for the live stream instead of a production video. And one other thing I'll tell you before I get started is that in a live stream, sometimes things go wrong. You know, in production videos, when things go wrong, we can edit them and cut them out. On a live stream, sometimes they go wrong. And maybe we will and maybe we won't. We might see something happen that doesn't work and I'll have to say, okay, this is not the way it's supposed to work and we have to go through it. But um, I'm kind of actually hoping something like that does happen so it gives you guys an idea of how to deal with issues when they come up. Because they do. They do come up. I would say Express LRS is still in its infan infancy. It's not highly mature yet. And there are some things they have to work out. So every now and then you run into these speed bumps. Um, and that's okay. You know, it's okay because it's it's. Uh, I think the technology is going to be a real force to be reckoned with in RC over the coming years. So with that said, that's the intro. Let's get started. I wanted to start out by telling you guys first or showing you, not telling you, but showing you what, what Express LRS is all about. So Express LRS is nothing more than radio technology, okay? Just like any other RF tech you use on your radio. You're familiar with radio, the concept of radio control. You have a transmitter and a receiver. What Express LRS is doing is it's using a, a, a modulation technique called uh, LORA, L-O-R-A, um, which stands for long range. And I put a link in the description for you that explains what LORA is. It is a spread spectrum technology, so it's a frequency hopper, and it's a low power platform that's designed to operate in noisy uh, uh, noise floor environments. Uh, urban environments, and it's intended to have long range under low power. So there's a link by Semtech uh, in the description. So if you want to read in detail what it is, feel free to do that. But it, the, the net of it is real simple. It's simply RF technology. It's, it's just a different way to modulate RF frequencies over the air. That's it. So here's a quick little key features of LoRa. Uh, connects devices up to 30 miles apart in rural areas, penetrates dense urban or deep indoor environments, has low power requirements. They say it's secure and features AES-128, which is pretty strong. It's not the strongest, but it's pretty strong. I don't know if the Express LRS implementation of this technology utilizes encryption or not. I don't think it does. Maybe one of the developers can chime in and confirm, but I don't believe it does, just, just to be clear. I think it's unencrypted. Uh, but the technology obviously lends itself to encryption, okay? So that's it. That's what Express LRS is. It's an RF technology, a modulation technique for your radio if, between a transmitter and a receiver, just like any other radio transmitter and receiver capabilities you might have on your standard radio, okay? Now, what Express LRS does is they package that modulation capability into a set of software firmware and, and software that you can use on modules for your radio uh, in the hobby. That's all they're doing. They're taking the modulation technique and they're baking it into firmware that works on chips that we can use in our radios. So there's an open source project out there called Express LRS that's responsible for doing this. 
So here's the Express LRS GitHub. Link is in the description for this as well. And this is where they store their software. So this is an open source project. Now, here's a key thing about open source, and it's good to understand this if you don't. What open source is, is these are volunteers. These are people just like you and me. These are people that are, are programmers, maybe in their day job. Maybe they have some uh, are, you know, job where they work in RF technology. Um, or, or maybe they're just enthusiasts. But they're, the bottom line is they're volunteers. So that's why when it comes to all of these open source projects, we always treat them with kid gloves. And we're very polite and very courteous because at the end of the day, they're not getting paid for this. They're just donating their time and expertise and giving it to us. So that's why I'm always, I always try to be very polite and courteous to the developers, okay? Because they, in open source projects, they're donating their time. So this is a group of people who got together and they formed this project, Express LRS, and they're using that LoRa technique to build firmware and software for us to use on our radios, okay? So that's what Express LRS is. You'll hear that all the time. You'll hear this concept of GitHub. And, and this is where they store and work, and this is how they collaborate, okay? GitHub is how they store their source code and where they collaborate together, and they handle issues and tickets and create uh, pull requests and, and build the software, okay? So that's what open source is for Express LRS, and that's why GitHub is important, and that's because that's where you can find the main software that you're going to need, okay? So those are the two big intros to Express LRS I wanted to give you. What is Express LRS? What is LoRa? And why are we using this? So I'm going to stop and I'm going to check the comments to see if there are any questions before I move on. All right. So uh, let's see. Not new to ELRS, but you always give us a few good nuggets. Glad to hear that, Tony. Appreciate you. Not new to ELRS, but your videos are always super. Thanks, Paulo. Thank you. Appreciate that. Clive says, just about to try out Express LRS next week. So this video is bang on time. Awesome. Glad to know that. I have beta FPV one mod, but one watt, but don't know how to bind it. So this is a good. Yeah, we're gonna get into that. So hang tight. We're gonna get into that. Um, morning drinking, Freddie. No morning drinking here. No morning drink. We're on. We're all business today, man. All business. Okay. So I don't see any questions. That means we're gonna move on. The next topic that I'm gonna cover are Express LRS modules. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about modules, and I'm gonna clear some things up for you guys. Now, first off. These are modules, these are external modules, and they're designed to go in radios. So here's the idea. When I bought this radio, or when I, actually, when I'm, this is sponsored. So when Express, when Radio Master sent me this radio, it did not have Express LRS capabilities in it. However, they planned ahead and they included what's called a JR bay. So that bay is called a JR bay. Notice it's got some power pins in the back. This JR bay is an expansion bay, and the intention with these bays is to allow you to add capabilities later, kind of like adding a cold air intake to your car after you buy it. Same concept. It allows you to upgrade the radio. That's what these bays are, okay? They're meant to accept these modules. Now, this module, I'm going to cover these modules as well. You're going to hear in the Radio Master lineup, there are three different, let me let me clear, let me move things and, and focus on this. So in the Radio Master lineup for Express LRS, oh, that's too much zoom, we'll have to go back out. There are three different module sizes, or there's actually three different modules, but only two different sizes. So the JR Bay, notice this box, you see that box on the back? This is the Ranger, this is their full size, like full Mac Daddy, Express LRS, got the OLED screen buttons, configuration buttons, fans, LEDs, this is the big one. However, it's got the same output power as the micro, same. They're, from an RF perspective, they're identical. This has just got more configuration capabilities. So notice that little box on the back of this thing, that box slides into this JR bay, all right? So the bay is right there, the box slides in there, you plug it in, and there you go. It's plugged in, and it's now part of the radio, and the radio's powering it up, okay? So that's a, that's what a JR bay does. It allows us to add external modules. So notice that the micro, this is the micro module now, okay? So it's, it's a misnomer in naming because it's actually the same box. It's the same exact JR bay box, okay? It'll fit the same way in the radio. So you've got the Ranger and the Ranger Micro, and they both use a JR style adapter to fit into the radio. So these are technically, they're the same size format, they're the same integration format is the correct way to put that, okay? So th that's the Ranger and the Micro, they both use a JR bay. The only real difference from these two is that this one has the OLED screen, so you can get information about what's going on. You've got buttons that allow you to configure it, and it's got some LEDs. That's about it. And I think it comes with two different styles of antenna. 
right? So that's it. Those two are both JR format modules. This one is called a Nano. This one has a little bit of a different format on the back. See, it doesn't have the big box. This is called a Nano adapter. And on this one, that's meant for different styles of radios that maybe don't have JR bays. So in the case of this uh, Elysium EL18 by Flysky, it's got a Nano bay. And the way this one works is it slides down into that little adapter and it pushes down onto the radio, and there we go. So it's the same deal. And by the way, from an RF perspective, you know, it's it's easy to look at these things and say, well, that's a micro, that's a nano, I obviously want the micro. Or that's a micro and that's a ranger, I obviously want this one. From an RF power standpoint, these are the, all the same. This one outputs the same one watt radiated power. So there's no power difference between them, okay? Don't don't let the size fool you. Don't let that intimidate or or change your change your thinking about which one to get. It's really about form factor and what your radio supports. So if you've got a bay that looks like that, that's called a nano bay. You need a nano adapter, okay? That's it. So that's that covers the modules, and I wanted to do that because um, I get questions. <laughs> I had a question today. Okay. Great, that's a nice module. What the hell does it do? And and I wanted to make sure that we covered that because for for the new for the new people that are new to this, they might not understand, you know, what what are these modules about? So now we've covered that, right? Now we know what the express modules about are about. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about flash methods. But before I do, I have to show you guys the software that you're going to need because before you can flash anything, you need to get software that allows you to do it. All right, so let's let's go back into the workspace. No, nope, before I do, hold on, I gotta check questions because I told you in between each one I was gonna check questions. All right, um, just received my Ranger, not new. Okay, just about to try, I have a beta FPV. Okay, got that. Click the like button, yes, definitely click the like button. Um, Je HB Jeff says, good morning, how are you? Um, let's see, I need another system like a, need a hole in the head, but it's engineer porn. <laughs> yeah, I know, Lonnie, right? It's fun. But I'll tell you what, man, I'm, I'm migrating pretty much everything to Express LRS. So, you know, that's where I am with it. I'm, I'm migrating all of it. Uh, uh, let's see, can't click the like button because we'll pull to, I should probably be listening. I need to do this. Freddie, you should definitely be listening, man. You, uh, you're one of the guys I had in mind for this. All right. Okay. No further questions in the comments, so I'm going to move on. We need to talk a little bit about the software, all right? It's important to understand that in order to get all of these modules updated with the firmware, keep the firmware up to date, or do the configuration, you need to be able to access uh, the configurator so you can flash firmware. And there's also, I'll show you how to access the modules via Wi-Fi. Um, but in order to flash your firmware, you need this tool called the configurator. The configurator is right here. You see this link on the Express LRS GitHub? You click on that, and on the right-hand side, there's a little link called releases. You see this releases link? You can click on the configurator right here, and then you scroll down a little bit, and you can download the one that you need for your computer. They've got Mac versions, they've got Linux versions, and of course, they've got Windows versions. They've even got Debian and block map versions. So they've got everything you need. But for Windows, you, if you're a Windows user, you'll click on the executable. And if you're a Mac user, you'll click on DMG. And if you're Linux, you probably already know you need an RPM or a deb file. So uh, we're going to download. It looks like it's going to take a while to download, so I'm not going to bother with it. I'm, after you download it, you just install it by clicking the executable. And when you've done that, you're going to get this. You're going to get what's called the Express LRS Configurator. All right. Just run through the install. And I'll tell you guys, the first time you install this, some things like take a little while, just let it go. It, it works. Just let it go. It has to download libraries and software. It, 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 it just does stuff. So just leave it alone. Let the install process go. And when you're finished, when the install is done, you'll get a little icon, Express LRS Configurator. You can run it and you can now have access to the tool that we use to build the firmware. Now, I want to talk about why do we have to have the Express LRS configurator and why do we have to make our own firmware? And the answer to that lies in this. First off, look at Radio Master alone. Radio Master alone has three different Express LRS modules. They've got the Ranger, the Micro, the Nano. Now, I don't know from a circuitry layout what might be different inside. I don't know. What I do know is that this one requires support for an OLED screen and some buttons and the nav button and these lights. That's not required in this one. Okay, so there's different firmware for different, uh, for different modules. The other one is on the receiver side. 
you've got this R24D and you've got this Radio Master. This is the uh, EP. What is this one? I forget the model. This is the R this is the EP3, I think. This is the um the dual antenna RP3, RP3. So that's a dual antenna version from Radio Master. You got the uh, Maytek R24D and a whole host of others. So the reason that we have to use the configurator is because there's lots of different hardware options out there and the developers don't want to compile a hundred different modules or firmwares for every release they do. So instead of doing that, they just update the code and they put it into the configurator so that when you're in the configurator, you can choose your device and decide for yourself what you need to compile. And also there are some options that go in the compile itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to configure the software or the firmware rather for the Ranger. And we're going to compile it and we're going to install it. Okay. That's what we're going to do. But now that you understand what the express LRS configurator is for and why you need to use it, I want to cover the different flash methods before we go through all that. Okay. So flash methods. Um, first, first thing is you can flash these over Wi-Fi. So when you add power to these rate, these uh, modules, they will, there's two things that'll happen. There's two, there's two Wi-Fi modes that can occur. The first one for an unconfigured module is that it will start its own little access point. And let me see, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show you guys the access point or not, because it's not on the screen, but let me, um, let me see, let me see if I can sort it out. There it is. So for, so right there, you can see that it, it popped up into, um, it, jo it actually joined my home network. So let me show you that. You see on the configurator down here on the bottom, it says it sees it. It's it's it, the 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 module joined my home network and the configurator sees it. It got an IP address on my LAN and it it popped up. So one way you can configure these is to use the Wi-Fi and and flash them over Wi-Fi. So here's a link. Here's a look at the what what's called the this is the landing page on the device. Okay, that when you connect to the device when it joins your Wi-Fi network, this is the landing page. Now, the configurator shows you the IP address. You don't have to figure it out. The configurator shows it to you. It says 192.168.1.0. You just click on that and that'll bring your browser right up into the landing page on the device. So this web page that you're looking at is the actual Ranger transmitter, all right? This is a, a web page that's hosted on the device itself. This exists on the transmitter. And you can see that there are some things you can do. You can put in a binding phrase. You can set the Wi-Fi on interval. This is how long it'll go when you first turn it on, how long it'll take the module to activate Wi-Fi, either joining your SSID or starting up its own SSID or its own access point. Um, that's the time that it takes before that happens. Um, you can invert the UART if you need to. You can set a fan runtime you can go in and set your Wi-Fi options. So here's in the landing page, this is where you would you could tell it how to join your home network. So you can set the home network and you can type it in. So my home network is called APX. Whoops, let me type it the right way. AP capital X. There we go, APX. And I can type in my password. And when I type that in and hit confirm, from that point on, anytime it goes into Wi-Fi mode, it's just gonna join my house network, okay? Um, so that's that. And then on this particular module, you notice there's a page called buttons. This is the one that lets you configure the buttons that are on the screen. So remember these buttons that I told you about these, this red and yellow and the nav button. This is what the, this is what lets you configure those. This page lets you specify what those buttons do. And then finally the Wi-Fi update page. This is the page where you can actually update the firmware. You bring this page up, choose the choose file button, find your firmware that you want to upload and upload it. And that will flash it to the transmitter. Okay. So you'll hear this, you'll hear this concept quite a bit. Now, if I, what I need to do is show you guys what happens if you don't have the home network connected and I'm going to, I'm going to click on this option that says reset all runtime options to default. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to hit okay. Now it's rebooting. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what this is what'll happen out of the box. When you first get one of these units and you haven't configured your home Wi-Fi, what it's gonna it doesn't know about your home network. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna start its own access point. It'll start its own connection to the network. And when it does that, you'll need to connect from your computer directly to the hotspot. 
And notice the address that it brings up. Um, oh, it's, saying, it's still saying TX local. It really shouldn't. It should not be joining my home network. So give me, this is why I told you, Express LRS, you got to watch it. So hold on a second. Let me um, see if it started its own Wi-Fi or not. Um, if not, I know another way to do it. So remember what I told you in the beginning, this is one of those deals where sometimes things don't work exactly the way they're supposed to. So we have to be patient if that happens. Yeah. So it came right back up. It, it didn't, it didn't reset the Wi-Fi. So here's what I'm going to do. I'll go into Wi-Fi and I'm going to click forget home network setting, always use AP mode and I'll hit confirm. Okay. There we go. So now uh, if we go back to the module, it should say 10.0.0.1 and it does. Now what we have to do is use our Wi-Fi connection on our computer, and there we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and rearrange the screen so you guys can see what's going on here. Give me just a moment. I normally don't have it set up this way, but I'm gonna go ahead and and um, show you guys the screen so that you can see what I'm seeing down here on the bottom. So there's my little script, my notes. So here we go. There we go. Now you can see it. Now what will happen is when I click on this and look at my Wi-Fi networks that I can choose from, you see this one called Express LRS TX? We need to connect to that. Now what that'll do is it'll connect your computer's Wi-Fi to the transmitter or receiver. The receivers do the same thing. It'll connect to the transmitter model or the module or the receiver module. So I'm gonna click on that. And when I do, it's gonna give my computer an IP address from, from the transmitter. And we're gonna now navigate on the module to 10.0.0.1 and that is a hard coded address. You don't you don't have you won't get any other addresses. You're all, it's just going to be 10.0.0.1. And when we click on that, there we go. We're back on the landing page, okay? So again, there's two ways to connect via Wi-Fi to these. One is via the AP mode on the device itself. So when you're on AP mode, this this particular module tells you it's 10.0.0.1. That means it's an AP mode. You have to connect to this device uh, on, the, on the little Wi-Fi on your computer and then open your browser 10.0.0.1 and you'll find the transmitter, okay? That's the one way. That's one way to do it via Wi-Fi. And the other way to do it is to put in your home network credentials. So once you've gained access via Wi-Fi, you can go back in here, click on your home network, enter your home network credentials. And then let's make this little drop down go away. There we go. Okay, so I'm entering my home network credentials, and then when I do that, we can watch watch the Express LRS configurator, and it'll pick it up. Well, once it picks it up, then it, you know that the unit is connected to your home network. All right, so that's the that's the um, the two Wi-Fi modes that I wanted to show you, and uh, it's important to understand them both because this is how you get into the device if you want to do configuration work. Okay. Um. All right, so I think that's it on the Wi-Fi stuff. Let me just check my my plan, my game plan here, and we will move on. Just a moment here, fellas. Give me one second. All right. I'm going to check comments, too, because I told you guys I was going to check comments in between segments, and we are in between a segment. So let me take a look at comments, and we'll see if I'm ready to move on. Um Mine was supposed to have working LEDs, but it's stuck on the color blue. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why it would be stuck on a given color. Where I place the RP3 to it, where I separate them. Just so You want them on two different planes. So when you have dual antennas, what you really want to do... Here, let me just give you a picture. So when you have two, two antennas like this, what, this, right now they're both in the same plane. These are both in the horizontal plane. You want one in the vertical plane like that. So when you have two antennas like this, you want them 90 degrees out. And what that'll do is give you the best coverage in the radiation plane for your modules. All right. So two different planes, get one in 90, you know, 90 degrees from each other and get one vertical, one horizontal. That'll give you the best coverage. All right. Let me go back to the workspace and check, com keep checking comments. Let's see. What else do we have? Uh, I tried to enable Wi-Fi, but when, when flashing my Ranger Micro by following your video from the other week, but kept getting can't connect message, still haven't figured it out. Yeah, we're going to talk about that too, Tony, because the Wi-Fi thing, I'm not a huge fan of the Wi-Fi for flashing. Um, so if you don't have Wi-Fi, you're going to have to think about UART connectivity. And if you don't have a home Wi-Fi, that's where you have to use the AP mode. You can connect to AP mode with your phone. 
if you want to. Now you have a problem uploading firmware that way, but if you want to connect via your phone, you can. So break out your smartphone, connect to the Wi-Fi, and launch that 10.0.0.1, you can get right in there. Uh, cool AP mode it is. Yeah, there you go. AP mode is the way to do it. You, there you go. Uh, James said, hiding the plug. I was like, how's it lit up? <laughs> okay. I see something in a language I can't understand, so sorry, I have to skip that. Sometimes it asks for a password. Express LRS is the password. Thanks, Glenn. Yeah, you know, you're right about that, and I haven't seen that in a long time. I haven't seen that since, like, 2.1, but that is a very good point. If you are asked for a password when you're connecting to the AP mode of the transmitter or receiver, use Express LRS for the password. Uh, Paul Velas says, what is, the, what is better for long-range Crossfire or Express LRS? Crossfire can output 2 watt. Are there any options for Express LRS? Um, Express LRS on the Ranger can do two watts. It's a hack, but I don't get into that because it's a violation of SEC Part 15. So I don't get into that. But let me we're going to cover range in just a minute. In fact, hold that question. Let me we're going to talk about that in just a minute. JD says I can't get Express LRS to work on my new EL18. Had to make a scripts folder, drop the latest ELRS LUA in there, and it does not work. Okay. That may be a Discord question, JD. You might have to get on Discord to, to address the troubleshooting. AP mode connects without a problem. Yeah, it does. It does connect. It's n normally not a big deal. Okay, um, so let's. I want to talk a little bit about range. I want to. I want to show you guys something on range real quick um, because this was part of the plan all along too. By the way, so let me. I'm going to move this out of the way and let me bring up this browser. And I want to show you guys, so I get this question about range all the time. And I'm, and I'm going to tell you something. This is coming from a guy who used to fly long range. I used to, I used to fly long range out in the deserts in Arizona. I don't do it anymore because the world changed and they get kind of animated about us, you know, flying high and far away. But I just wanted to show you guys something in terms of range. And I'm just going to call something out. Um, I want to just ask a question. If anybody in this chat or in this discussion thinks that they have the video capabilities to fly more than 10 miles, do you think you have that capability? You think you have the capability to fly 15 miles? What about 20? You think you can do 20 miles? Because I'm here to tell you right now, if you are able to fly 20 miles away, you don't need my videos because that means you're going to be expert enough in both the RF tech and the video tech to not really need to listen to what I'm saying. All right. So here's why I say that. And I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to be arrogant when I tell you that. I'm just telling you guys having been a long range flyer before, it's not the control that's the problem, it's the video. Okay? Flat out it's the video. So I want to show you the leaderboard for Express LRS. Now, in this leaderboard, they have very specific rules in order to get listed on this leaderboard. It has to be a, a YouTube, it has to be a film video, no statements, no static pictures, it has to be a video and you have to prove it. And the leaderboard for 2.4 gigahertz, or sorry, not 2.4, this one's 900 megahertz, uh, 40 kilometers at 900 megahertz using 10 milliwatts. So 40 kilometers, 25 miles, 25 miles. You, you guys have to understand that if you can fly 25 miles on control, again, you're not going to need my help and your video is going to be the problem, not control, period. Flat out, full stop. It's not going to be the control that's an issue. So uh, that's the that's the 900 megahertz. Here's 10 kilometers. 10 kilometers is about 6. Point, what 6.2 miles, I think. 6.2 miles on 2.4 gigahertz at 10 milliwatts. So this guy flew six miles away uh, on 2.4 at 10 milliwatts. That's another one that I see people say all the time, oh, I need two watts. Why do you need two watts? The technology doesn't need two watts. You think you need two watts, but the tech doesn't. They're, they're showing you guys, there's proof in here that at 10 milliwatts, they can fly six miles away. Look what happens when they get on to 25 milliwatts, uh, 4.6 kilometers, a little less than six miles. Um, it, and these are 25 milliwatts, all right? 50 milliwatts, uh, seven kilometers, six kilometers. So the moral of the story here, guys, is that I, I really... Look, if you're going to fly that far away and you think you need that kind of power level, then you probably don't need an intro video, right? You're a little bit more advanced because you're going to be working on more aggressive video solving problems anyway. So I wanted to show you the leaderboard just to give you an idea of what this tech is capable of doing at very low power settings. These guys are flying 10 kilometers away at 10 milliwatts. That's, that's ridiculously insane. So just keep that in mind. Um... When it comes to range, you 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 know you probably don't need as much as you think you need in terms of output power. Okay, that's the moral of that story. 
Okay, now let's. I want to get back on track and go f get back on track with with flashing. So we covered the Express LRS configurator. I showed you guys how to download it. Now let's configure and we'll flash. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to flash, but my methods for flashing are going to be with a dongle. So I want to show you the dongle first, and I'm going to tell you guys right now. Um, if you're going to be getting into Express LRS, I have a link in the description for you to go get one of these things. Get one of these dongles. Now, this is the beta FPV version. I put the link for the for this one in the description. You don't have to use the beta FPV. You can use any FIDI dongle you want. That's F-T-D-I, F-T-D-I, Frank Tango Delta India. Um, you can use any of these that you want. They all work. Um, I like this one because it just worked out of the box. And I like that they have this little pin adapter so I can connect my wires and then I can press down on the board without having to solder anything. So I like the little adapter that came with this one and I use this one so it works. Now that said, I'm going to show you how to, how to flash via UART. Now you can flash via Wi-Fi, and I'm going to tell you because this is an intro course or an intro video, forget it, get one of these things and learn to flash over UART because Wi-Fi is still somewhat problematic. It still has issues with targets and file sizes. When it comes to flashing via UART directly, this is like God mode for Express LRS, okay? Get one of these dongles, they're $7. There's no excuse not to have one, just get one. I'm telling you right now, this will save you migraines. Just get one and flash your stuff with the UART dongle. Don't worry about Wi-Fi. I'm not even gonna show you how to flash via Wi-Fi today. I showed you how to access the Wi-Fi so you can configure if you want, but we're only going to flash via UART today. All right, so get one of these dongles. Trust me on that. Take your medicine, go spend the seven bucks. It's worth it. All right, so that's the dongle. Now let's go into the configuration and flashing. I'm gonna bring up the workspace again. We're gonna go back into the configurator. And what we're gonna do first is flash the Ranger. All right, we're gonna flash the Ranger module. And here's how you do it. Once you're in the configurator, you wanna click on this top section over here on the left. In fact, let me get a little mouse cursor out, see if I can get you guys a little help so you can see what I'm clicking on. You wanna click on this guy right here, the configurator, right? Click on that, and then you wanna be in official releases. There are other branches you can pull down, but again, that's more expert stuff, or if you're working with the developer. You don't mess with this stuff unless you really know what you're doing, or you wanna experiment, or one of the developers asked you to, okay? Other than that, just stick in this official releases section. That's all you need. And then uh, for the releases, you can see they've got all the different release versions in here. We're gonna use 3.1.2. The next thing we need to do is pick our category. And this basically has to do with manufacturers. It's not entirely, but basically has to do with manufacturers. So the reason I say that is, for example, if you use the Matek R24 uh, P6, the PWM, you use the DIY firmware, not a Matek firmware. It's weird, I know, but that's one of the biggest challenges you're gonna have with Express LRS is making sure you get the right target, all right? So in my case, I'm flying with a Radio Master Ranger. So we're gonna scroll down and look for Radio Master. There it is. Radio Master 2.4 gigahertz. See, this is why they don't, this is why you have to use Configurator. Look at all these options. Could you imagine the developers having to compile for every one of these? That's why they give you the Configurator, all right? So we're looking at Radio Master 2.4 gigahertz. And for the device, we have to select the device we're using. In my case, it's a Ranger 2400TX. It's real simple. Uh, if I were using the micro, I'd use this one, and the nano is that one. See, three different options for the three different modules. Make sure you pick the right one for your module. In my case, we're using the Ranger 2400TX. So I'll click on that. And then the next thing we're going to do is you see this little option here that says download Lua script? Do that. So we're going to click this button. We're going to download the Lua script. I'll put it on my desktop, and I'll show you where to store that later. But see that file name called ELRS Lua right there? ELRS V3 Lua. Save that to your desktop because we're going to upgrade that too. All right. So we've downloaded the Lua script. We're going to flash via UART. All right. And then we are going to set our configuration options. So in the configuration options, basically, if you're in the EU, you'll select 2400. If you're in the US, you'll select domain ISM 2400. I suppose if you're outside the EU, you might understand if you're supposed to use EU standards or not. I don't know what the worldwide standards are. All I know is that in the US, use ISM, and if you're outside the US, in the EU, use 2400. 
you have to understand your local governance. I can't keep up internationally with every local governance. So I'm sorry about that, but um, just understand what you need to do. In my case, it's the US, I'm using ISM 2400. The next thing we're gonna do is talk about the binding phrase. The binding phrase is killer important. Um, you, you have two different ways to bind. One is the old fashioned way where you're gonna power on and power off and power on and power off. And then the light goes into a blinky mode and then you put, you turn the, put this on binding phrase. That's a pain in the neck. We're not going to do that. We're going to use a binding phrase. Now, do you, you remember, you watch the old war movies where, you know, the guys fighting the battles, they have the secret password and they're like, hey, the secret password's flash. Okay, you can come into the command post. Same concept. A binding phrase is nothing more than a word that you put here and here. And if these two both have the same word, then they'll talk to each other. So they ask each other when they fire up, hey, flash. And this one says, yep, flash. Okay, let's talk. All right, that's it. That's all a binding phrase is is it's a, a phrase that you, you put on both devices, all your devices, and when you put it on there, they bind. You don't have to press buttons. You don't have to go through anything on the transmitter or the receiver. You just turn them on and they talk, okay? So we use, forget about the old way of binding. You don't press buttons. You don't have flashy lights. Um, don't do that. Just use the binding phrase. It's totally the way to go on Express LRS, all right? Binding phrases are key. It's the same word you put on the receiver and the transmitter. We put the same word on both, and when we do that, they talk. It's amazing. It's really cool technology because all you have to do is just flash all your receivers the same binding phrase. You never have to worry about binding anything. They just come on and talk to your transmitter. It works. So in my case, I use the binding phrase ELRS123, bang, 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 and that goes on everything. My transmitters, my receivers, everything. Uh, you are inverted. That's uh, basically radio dependent. So it says enables compatibility with radios that input that output inverted CRSF, such as the Q7, TBS, Tango, Radio Master, TX16S. My case, I use a TX16S, so I use UART inverted. Okay. Um, you can look at all the others, the telemetry reporting inter interval. You can change it to a fixed interval. Default is 240. If you want to change it to something else, you can check this and change the value. Um, it's recommended not to. You can set the Wi-Fi on interval. This is the time that it takes if you don't have a bind before it will either turn on its AP mode or join your home network. And this is in seconds. So in my case, I set mine for 20 seconds. And then you can put in your SSID and your password. That's it. That's the transmitter. That's Those are the options for the transmitter. It's that simple. Uh, if you don't want to configure your home SSID, you can simply uncheck these two. Leave them unchecked and it won't send those parameters to the transmitter. All right. So that's it. Next thing we're going to do is now, now I'm going to plug in, I'm going to go back to the camera or the, the screen, the desktop, so you can see what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take my, I don't need the dongle for this one. I have the uh, transmitter. This is USB-C cable plugged into my computer. Okay. And I'm just going to plug it into the USB-C port on the Radio Master. Now, one of the reasons I really like Radio Master is because you don't need to configure dip switches. Some of these transmitters, you have to open the case and set some dip switches. I didn't put a link in the description. I forgot to do that, but I, I will. After the video's over, I'll go back and put it in for you. But you have to go look at the wiki, and the wiki will show you um, what dip switches for what boards. So depending on the board you have, you have to set dip switches inside. That's one thing I really like about the Radio Master. They did away with all that. It'll automatically go into DFU mode and allow you to program via UART with just plugging in a USB-C cable. So the other end of this USB-C is plugged into my computer. This one, this USB-C right here on the bottom, that's what I'm, I'm gonna connect to on the Ranger. We just plug it in, okay? We plug it in and when we go back to the workspace and watch, you're gonna see the configurator will pick up that my radio master is connected via COM4. Now you do need the Silicon Labs drivers. I didn't put a link for those in the description. I'll put those in as well, but they're the Silicon Labs CP21X, 21NX drivers or something like that. I'll put a link in the description. You have to download those as well. It's real simple to install those. But anyway, you can see Configurator has the Silicon Labs FTDI driver that's built in and that's it. So now we have communications. We're ready to flash the module. So I'm gonna click build and flash, build and flash. Now this part can take some time. You guys, the first time you do this, it'll take a lot of time because it's gonna download a lot of software. I've been flashing forever and I keep my stuff pretty up to date. So this, this process should go fairly quickly for me. So this is a, uh, what, what's basically happening is it's building, it's building a um, binary for me. It's compiling it in real time for me based on the options that I used. So once it gets, and, and again, this could take some time. The first time you do it, it could take, 
you know, it could take five minutes. It'll look like it's stuck. Trust me, it's not. Don't worry about it. It's fine. So just let the build process take its take place. And you'll see once it starts doing this writing thing, see this writing one, three, five, seven, that's good. That means it's writing the firmware to your module. Okay. So that's the UART mode. And I'm telling you guys right now, UART mode is God mode. It's, it's the way to go, especially if you're new. Um, FG dude says, if you use 3.1 on the TX, can you use 3.2? Yeah, all the major firmware revisions are compatible, but do yourself a favor, get off that 3.1 and get yourself on to 3.2, okay? You got to switch, um, go to go to 3.2. But yes, the major firmware versions are compatible. The major revision numbers are compatible. Okay, so there we go. You can see we've got success. We flashed the module successfully. And what will happen on the, on the module is it reboot itself. And right now it says no handset, but if we just wait, it's going to go into a, a, a Wi-Fi mode. And it looks like it should have joined my network. I'm going to go back to the configurator and we're going to see if it if it's showing up in the configurator. There it is. See, it just popped up in the configurator. It joined my Wi-Fi network. We can click on that, uh, that uh, IP address. And there we go. We're right back into the module. And you can see I've got Radio Master Ranger 2.4. And we've got our ability to enter all of our parameters right here. Okay, so there you go. That's how you flash the transmitter module. And this is how you configure it. After you flashed it, this is how you get in and configure it. All right, that's the transmitter. Now I'm going to pause there and I'm going to, I'm going to take a, uh, I'm going to check questions. We're going to take a look at questions then I'm going to move on. Let's see here. Um, JD says, not without being at 4,000 feet. I don't understand the reference. Probably had something to do with long range. JD, hit me up on Discord, man. We'll talk about it if you have a question or a comment there. Uh, just in time, maybe they meant in penetration wise, 500 milliwatt, and I still get fail safe flying behind. Well, but see, flying behind, yeah, they're okay. Let's clear this up. This Laura is not meant to pen. It's not. It's not a penetrating tech, right? It's not 900 megahertz at two watts. This is meant for clear sky flying. Okay, if you are flying in bandos and stuff, sure, that's a different story. That's a very different story. You, you probably do have to jack up your power a little bit, but um, keep in mind, I. I don't necessarily think that Laura is designed to be a penetrating technology, although I reserve the right to be wrong about that. I don't want to spread rumors, so I can't say that for fact. I just don't think that's the intent. I believe the intent is for clear sky flying. Um, so if you have obstructions, that's a different question. Well, my references are always to clear line of sight. Okay. Uh, Tony says those dongles are fantastic. I even use mine to alter the settings of my GPS module. Yep, I agree. On your chart, normally higher the hertz, lower the range. Higher the hertz, lower the... Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. Um, that's because it has to do with half-life of RF. So when you, as you travel, uh, 900 megahertz goes through... You go through half-life, 900 megahertz loses more than 2.4. So that's why. It has to do with half-lifing and distance. Uh, let's see. Jeremy. Oh, cool. I didn't realize this was live. What's up? <laughs> How's it going? Uh, Justin says, interesting view, which is the complete opposite of JB. He's Wi-Fi flashing all the way. Yeah. I, I don't... To me, I just did some flashing last night with our, with some uh, Maytech R24 P6s, and they failed. And not only did they fail, they bricked. So I, you can flash via Wi-Fi. And for me personally, I always flash via Wi-Fi first. But this is an intro class. And the reason that I suggest flashing via UART is because that will get you over hurdles that you might encounter while flashing via Wi-Fi. And I have nothing but love for the Express LRS guys, but there's work to be done there. They still have partition file size problems that come from the chip. The, the way the memory partitions are mapped out from certain manufacturers creates problems writing firmware to the chip. So it's not there. It's not within their control. We have to get it. We're still in this infant sta infancy stage where there's still little issues out there. And when you try and write a firmware that says not enough space, there's about a 50 50 chance you just bricked it. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it goes into rapid flashing mode. That's why, that's why I'm saying this is an intro class. And as an intro class, I highly recommend the use of a dongle. And if for no other reason, even if you know exactly what you're doing and you, you, you put a bad flash on the module, either the receiver or transmitter, and it goes bad, you're going to need the dongle to recover it. So that's why I recommend the dongle, right? It's the dongle is kind of like a fail safe method of doing it. It just works. And even if you screw something up, you can get it back. So definitely use the dongle. A bunch of wing guys just went, yeah, JP, that's right. John, what's the flash option you mentioned for the Maytech? Was that for the TX or RX? Um, I don't have a Maytex. I don't have a Maytech 
uh, TX. I have I have May, I have Maytech RX. I'll show you that in just a moment. Uh, if you use 3.1 on the TX, can you use 3.2? Yes, you can. You can. The major firmware version is what determines. And I haven't tested like 3.x to 2.x. I haven't tried that. I expect it probably would work, but you really want to keep your major firmware versions together. Um, but the minor rev, rev numbers, yeah, it's okay. As long as the first version, yeah, there we go. It's just in time, set it to. I upgraded my TX to 3.1.2 and it still communicated with RX3. Yeah, it, it is safe. It's fine. It's fine. You can do that. It's not a problem. Can you show what options are on the OLED screen? Is there an option to change switch modes? You know, I haven't really messed around with the OLED screen. I guess we can look through it and take a look maybe, but I haven't really fiddled with it to be honest with you because I don't you fly with it. I fly with a micro. Is that the same for the Boxer as it is built in? Boxer's a little bit different. On the Boxer, what you're going to do when you connect the USB cable, you connect, you put it in serial mode, and once you've done that, Clive, then you can flash via UART the same way, okay? So you just have to put it in serial mode if you have an internal module. All right? These are great questions, guys. I really like this kind of interaction, so keep it up. All right, now next thing I want to do is go through, I want to do a flash of a receiver, okay? So... We're gonna go back. I'm gonna disconnect this now. We're gonna we're gonna take this one off and we're gonna set it aside, and we're gonna bring up a receiver. And I've got a little scenario already mapped out. And I'm gonna show you guys what's important about this. Let me let me do a zoom. Let me do a zoom in here, and I want to show you guys what's important about the receiver. So you guys think about your cell phone. If you're talking on your cell phone, you've got the earpiece next to your ear, and you've got the mouthpiece next to your mouth, right? Now that mouthpiece of yours goes to the earpiece of the person you're talking to, right? So you're, tr you're converting, you're switching. The transmitter on your phone, the mouthpiece, goes to the earpiece or the receiver on the other side, okay? The other side, the person you're talking to, their mouthpiece, that's the transmitter on their end, goes to the receiver on your end, which is your earpiece. Same deal when you're talking about flashing and doing serial communications. Notice that this dongle has TX and RX, okay? RX is blue and TX is yellow. You have to switch those when you go to the other device, all right? So that's all you gotta do is switch them. So what I'm gonna do is show you on the receiver that I've got here. This is a Maytech R24D and, yeah, I needed to get my pointer. Shut up, don't judge me. All right, this is ground right there, ground. Five volts. You see that T right there? That's transmit. T is transmit and R is receive. Okay, so all we have to do is we're going to connect ground and five volt. Let's do that first. We'll do ground. Don't screw this up because if you screw it up, you're going to blow up your something, either your dongle or your receiver or both. So don't screw it up. Got to get your polarity right. All right. So we'll just double check my work. Okay, I've got red. Black is ground and red is on five volts. Okay, so we're good there. Now, the next pin is T. What we need to do is look on our dongle and we want the R lead, all right? So I have blue on R. You see the R, that's on blue right here. We're gonna connect the R from the dongle to the T on the receiver, okay? And then there's only one wire left, so that's gonna be, that's gonna be the, uh, that's going to be the T on the dongle, and that's going to go to the R on the radio. All right, so there we go. The transmit on the dongle goes to the R on the, on the receiver, and the R on the dongle goes to transmit on the receiver. So you cross them up, all right, just like on your cell phone. All right, that's that. That's all you have to do. So let's zoom out a little bit now that we've got that. And what I want to do now is show you how to connect this to your computer. So I'm gonna connect this first on this side and then I'm gonna unplug it from my computer and I'll show you why, there's a reason for that. Everything's flopping around, it's not gonna stay still. Okay, so the reason for that, now I'm gonna unplug it from my computer. The reason for that is because um, I left it half plugged in on my computer and now I can hit the DFU mode button. This little button and all of these devices have it. DFU mode is what tells it, hey, get ready to receive. Get ready to receive a firmware. We're gonna be writing a firmware. So that little button right there, it's a little tiny SOB. You gotta find it, hopefully you have a nail, maybe you can use a pen or a knife, but you gotta hit that little button and that puts it in DFU mode. So let me, I gotta, there we go, I got it. I'm pressing the little button down. I know that's a terrible cam camera angle, sorry about that. Now I've plugged in the module 
and we know we're in DFU mode on the Maytech R24D when we have a solid red light. You see that solid red light? That's DFU mode, okay? So now we can flash this receiver via DFU mode on this dongle, all right? Now we're gonna go over to the workspace. I'm gonna move this thing out of the way, and we're gonna go through the same configuration again. We've got our Express LRS configurator. I'm gonna stay on release 312, and I'm gonna change my category. This time I'm flashing a Maytech R24D. There's Maytech right there. And I'm gonna select the device R24D right here, and I'm connect. Now, there's another way to flash, through, and that's through Betaflight. I'll get into that in just a moment, hang tight. So I'm gonna flash via UART. That's what this little dongle is. It's a UART connection. And then for my configuration, same thing. ISM 2400, I've got, notice my binding phrase. Remember I told you, uh, the, the, both the, both the guard and the guy coming in from patrol, they both have to have the same phrase, right? The, in my case, it's ELRS 123. That's your binding phrase. Make sure it's the same. The cool thing about configurator is it remembers. You don't have to type it in every time. When you bring configurator up, it'll save that binding phrase for you. Okay. But just use the same binding phrase on both your transmitter and your receiver. All right. Um, unless you know what you're doing, just leave these unchecked or read the help. The help will tell you what, what, what you need to do. So read the help and don't change things unless you think you have to, based on what the help says. Lock on first connect. That option says default mode is for the RX to cycle through the available RF modes with five second pauses going from highest to lowest. This allows the RX to cycle, but once a connection has been established, the RX will no longer cycle through RF modes until it receives a power reset. You can turn that on or off depending on what your needs are. Um, Wi-Fi interval is the same, home network information is the same, and notice that the configurator automatically picked up COM4 silicone labs. Now, if your configurator is not picking that up when you plug this dongle in, you probably have a driver problem that you have to sort out, okay? Again, I'll put the link for silicone labs in the description after the video is over. Sorry for not doing it ahead of time. But you got to make sure the driver is installed, and if it is installed then the configurator without fail will pick it up. Every single time it's always picked it up for me once it's plugged in, okay? So you have to see something, some COM port available that the configurator sees. Yours might be COM five or six or seven, um, but your computer or configurator should see it, okay? If it doesn't, don't even try and flash. You, you have to sort that out first, okay? Okay, so here we go. Everything's set. Now I'm gonna hit build and flash. And again, we're gonna build our firmware in real time. It's compiling, right? It's gonna, it may have to download some software, but it's gonna compile in real time, all right? It's just gonna download what it needs, just let it go. Um, I can tell you guys that this process for me has been basically 100%. I've never seen a failure, unless you don't have internet access, I've never seen a failure on the download or the, the compile piece. And then here we go, you can see we're writing to the module. That all looks good. Everything looks outstanding there. And we got success. Yay, everything works. So that's the hard part. We're through the hard part now, all right? Everything seems to be working there. And now we can disconnect. I'm gonna go back to the camera so you can see it. Now, once it's flashing, that's rebooted already. We can simply disconnect and we'll be back. Actually, I might leave that on. It's there, it connected. That's Wi-Fi mode. The fast flashing is Wi-Fi mode. Let's see Let's see if it, if it shows up. How about that? Look at that. It showed up right here in Configurator. It joined my house network. And if I click on that link, there we go. I've got access to the R24D. See that? R24D, and it's got 312 on it. How about that? Pretty simple, right? Uh, Wi-Fi mode, uh, we don't need to change that, obviously, because it worked. And then in your model, there are some things you can do, like changing model match or turning telemetry off, and then you can update. So that's the connection to the receiver. Simple, right? That's pretty simple. That should, that should be pretty easy to understand. Okay, so let's go back to the big camera and I have to meet you guys for just a second and get a drink. Oh man, you talk a lot, it gets dry. Okay. So there we go. We, we went into Wi-Fi mode. We verified that this has now been flashed with 2.4 or sorry, 3.1.2. Uh, we're done with the module now, the, the dongle. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and show you guys now that we've, we've, we've bound, or sorry, we've flashed our transmitter with uh, 312 and we installed the binding phrase, express LRS 123, bang, 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 right? That's in there. And we did the same thing on this guy. Now I've got a little scenario set up over on the side here. 
I've got a, uh, this is a, in case you're not familiar with it, this is a CRSF to uh, PWM converter board by Maytech. This is CRSF-PWM-C. And I've got this set up right now with a connection to my power supply. And I've got a little servo connected. We don't need to use the battery. And all I need to do now is plug in my receiver and make sure the ground is on the right side. Don't screw this up. All right, I'm gonna plug this in and there we go. So just double check your work, right? Make sure your ground is on the right side. There is no polarity protection as far as I know. I got ground on the right, five volt in the middle. I've already verified my RX and TX lines are crossed, so they're correct. And now I'm gonna apply power. Okay, five volts and Oh, I probably should have turned the radio on first. Shame on me. It might go into fast blinking. Maybe. It might. It seems... Express LRS seems to like to have the modules turned on first. There we go. How about that? It worked. So see how the light went solid red, and then I got telemetry right here on the top, 25 milliwatts? There we go. Okay, so, so we're up and working, and you can see there's the servo movement, right? No binding, right? Or no binding, no binding process. I use the same binding phrase in the transmitter and the receiver. And because of that, we, right away, we got a bind. I didn't have to, no binding, pro, there is no binding process. It, you just put the, you put the binding phrase in and it handles it for you all by itself. It's very simple. So definitely stick with that binding phrase concept. Okay. Now I have one last thing I need to show you and then we're going to go into questions and then wrap this video up. Okay. So that's the, that's the procedure. That's how, you, that's how you get stuff flashed and connected and configured and bound. So the one last thing I told you I wanted to show you was the Express LRS Lua. Now, if you remember, I saved that on my, on my desktop, right? So let's move this stuff out of the way. See the Lua script right here? Save that on my desktop. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to go back to my radio. I'm going to take that USB-C cable that I've been using, and I'm going to plug it into the top of the radio. And then when I do that, if you leave your USB options standard, you should be prompted. I'm going to use USB storage. So USB storage, and that activates the SD card reader mode on the radio. And when it does that, we'll go back over to the workspace so you guys can see what's going on here. So when it does that, two little folders pop up. We're going to kill the one with firmware. Don't ever mess around in there. Just leave that alone. And then we're going to I want to make sure I can see the Lua script. There's Lua. All right, now we're going to navigate in here to Scripts, Tools. Now, I already have an Express. I have that one in there, so I'm cheating because I already have mine. So there we go. So and now you're going to just take this Lua script and drop it right in this Tools directory right here. All right, just drop it in there, let it go, and there you go. Now you've installed, you've updated and installed your Lua script, and you're ready to get in your radio and configure. So if I disconnect the radio... You know, I get questions all the time. Don't you safely eject? No, you don't have to safely eject. That's an old, outdated thing. It's no longer required. It hasn't been required for quite a while. So no, you do not have to safely eject your eject your, your SD card or your radio. Not required. Okay, so now we've got our Lua script in there. We're going to hit System and Express LRS. It should show up right there on the top. And there you go. We've got communications with our module. And from here, we can do things like change our packet rate, our telemetry ratio, how many channels you want to use, whether or not using model match. You can change your power settings. You can go in here and say, well, I don't really need one watt. I only need, say, 250 or 500 watts. So you can limit your max power if you want. Keep in mind, this is a radio, like an amateur radio operator concept that you only use as much power as necessary to complete the job. So keep that in mind when you're setting up your power levels. Um, if you're racing, flying with a lot of people, maybe you don't need to be swamping out there at 500 or, th or one, you know, 1,000 uh, milliwatts. Maybe maybe 500 or 250 will be enough. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But anyway, uh, you can set dynamic power mode, um, and you can go into VTX administrator. If you're doing a VTX uh, VTX setup, you can set up, go into Wi-Fi connectivity and tell the transmitter or the receiver to go into Wi-Fi mode. Although I'll tell you, I haven't had a lot of luck hitting enable RX Wi-Fi. It doesn't seem to activate it every single time. I can try it now just to see, just to show you. I'll click on that. Oh, how about that? It makes a liar out of me. It went right into Wi-Fi mode. <laughs> of course, live streams. <laughs> okay, but anyway, that's the Express LRS Lua. And I'm going to show you a pro tip in case you didn't know, in case you were unaware, you can also use TBS Agent Lite to configure an Express LRS module. See that? Radio Master Ranger. Look at that. <laughs> you can do it with TBS Agent Lite, and it works. It does work. I've tested it. 
So you can go in and change your parameters in TBS Agent Lite. So if you like the looks of that, keep your TBS Agent Lite up to speed and you can use it to configure your radio, uh, your Express LRS modules as well. So just a little pro tip for you. Okay, I think um, I said I was going to show you something. Oh, I did want to show you one other thing too. This is another question that I get all the time. Uh, two things real quick. Number one, let's go into the hardware page and let's make sure that your external module is on normal. See that sample mode normal? You need to make sure that's set. And then the other thing you need to do, because I've heard people say they've gone into, um, they've gone into their uh, Express LRS Lua settings and it just says loading. The other thing you need to make sure you do is under your model settings, you need to have, you need to go under external RF and you need to turn that on. So the mode needs to be CRSF, uh, your baud rate 400. It should get some kind of reading or status line here. And once you get that, you, that probably means you should be able to talk to it after that. Um, it, and then if you want to change your receiver number, you can do that. And see when I change mine, it switches the, the Hertz to 100. If I change it back down to one, it changes it to 333. That, that means I know I'm talking to that module. So you need to do those two things too in order to ensure that your Express LRS um, is, uh, is powered on and working so it, it talks to your radio, okay? All right, I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover. The, we covered the flash methods, Wi-Fi modes, UART, the beta FPV dongle. Oh, beta flight, that's the one I wanted to talk about real quick. I'm glad I read my script. Okay, if you have beta flight, so if you're using quads and you have a receiver connected via beta flight, you can flash directly through beta flight. So all you need to do in that case is bring up beta flight and don't connect. So you could connect and verify that your COM port is working, but once you've done that, hit disconnect on beta flight, and then you can run the configurator and flash directly through beta flight. So there is an option, if you remember back on the configurator, there's an option up here to flash through beta flight pass through. All you have to do if you have a receiver that works with beta flight is just open the beta flight interface, connect, make sure the COM port's right, hit disconnect, and then you can flash directly through beta flight. That was the one other thing I wanted to share with you guys. Okay, that is it. Guys, we've gone top to bottom on what I consider to be a, a basic introduction to Express LRS. We covered what Express LRS is, where to get it, um, why it's being used. We talked about modules and module interfaces. We talked about the Express LRS configurator, why we use it. I showed you how to download, configure, compile, and flash via the configurator. And we talked about the different flash methods, including Wi-Fi, UART, the beta FPV dongle, and beta flight. Okay, I think that covers everything top to bottom. So I wanna go through and check and see if there are any other questions, and then we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, so Tony says, John, what was the flap shops option you mentioned for the Maytech? Was that for the TX? Oh, I answered that already. So the Maytech, um, I, I don't think there is a Maytech R, a TX. No, they only have RX, RXPWM, and R24D. Oh, maybe you're talking about the Maytech R24P6. P that one, you use the DIY. <coughs> Excuse me. That one used the DIY 2.4. And the vice is PWM, PWMP, I believe. It's either that one or the EX. I don't remember, but it's one of those two. All right, uh, let's see. Can you show what options are on the OLED screen? Oh, yeah, he asked about that earlier. I, like I said, I haven't really messed with it, so I don't, I'm not sure I even know how to navigate this thing. Oh, let, let's see. Sorry, man. You know what? That's going to have to be another video, buddy, because I'm I'm like a monkey with a football on that one right now. I've got no idea what's going on with that. I'll have to do that'll have to be another one, my friend. Sorry. I'm not familiar. I just haven't messed with it. So rather than be a monkey with a football, I'll I'll maybe check into it and maybe we'll cover them in another session. But sorry, I just don't know. Um, TBS Agent Light did not know that. See, there you go. A little nugget for you. Jeff says, John, how about the S bus adapter? Um, the S bus adapter. So yeah, I mean, I don't have any of those handy, Jeff, but you can also, of course, plug an SBUS converter into the output of your receiver and send SBUS out to a device. Of course, you can do that. Um, no problem. I do that. I have that on several planes. In fact, I use that with my, um, let me see if I have one. I do have one. I use that with these extreme power system um, boards. So these take S bus in. Here's the, uh, and this is a dual receiver option. So this is another converter board that'll take S bus. Come on, 
Come on, camera, work with me. What's, what's going on here? There we go, now it's focused. So there's receiver one, receiver two. These are both S bus in. So in this arrangement, I use an Express LRS receiver with an S bus converter connected to these two pins. You know, if I wanna use one receiver, I connect it here, two receivers here, and then that converts to PWM as well. So yes, you can convert to S bus, it works great. My Alta says, JD joined the EdgeDS Discord and asked there for help for the Express LRS Lewis script on the EL18. Thanks, my Alta, appreciate you. Yeah, they've got a great Discord too, by the way. Really helpful, knowledgeable people. All right, Tony says, thanks. You're welcome. All right, that's it. We are at the top. We've covered it all. <laughs> I've already done the recap, so I'm not gonna do it again. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button. That really helps out. Make sure you subscribe. Get out there and fly something. That's all I've got for today. I appreciate you joining me. Hope you enjoyed the content. Subscribe. And go fly something, but subscribe.